Hey guys, this is a slightly longer episode than normal, but be sure to stick around to the very end of the video. There's some bonus audio at the end that, trust me, it's worth it, and I know you'll like it. Welcome back to Pyro Falcon's Let's Play Extravaganza. For a split second, I forgot the name of my channel. I'm joined by the Akamura Aww. as we're playing Final Fantasy VI. Hi, everyone. So we're in Jador, and we're going to the rich part of town. This is Owser's house. And you can see how rich he is because he has all these awesome paintings. And look at one of the paintings. It's Ultros. Somebody wanted a painting of Ultros. He's so cute with his misshapen, sharp yellow teeth. It makes All me right. think of something Cecil said in one of the later episodes of Welcome to Night Vale. So here's... Who's an adorable little kitten with your adorable little tendril hub? You are. So here's the impresario who is actually the impresario, unlike that imposter on the train. Imposter. And he's surprised that Maria just walked through the door, but... It's not Maria. It's Celeste. Apparently, Maria and Celeste could be uh, taken for twins. So the impresario leaves, which happened. Let's go. Come on. Yes, everyone's confused. Celeste is flipping us off and whatever. So she's apparently a famous opera singer. Do tell. Okay. And Auser, or the impresario drops off. A letter. Jesus, who the fuck? Stop blowing horns in my driveway. Okay, he's the director of the operas here. Everyone calls him Impresario. Now, this asshole who's talking to us is not Owser. Even though this is Owser's mansion, we do not know who Owser is until the second half of the game. But anyway, apparently the Impresario has been in a tizzy ever since that letter arrived. My dear Maria, I want you for my wife. I'm coming for you. The Wandering Gambler. This is this Wandering What's-His-Name? You born on a farm, son? I cannot possibly read that without thinking of someone in a very, very southern accent saying it. A blackjack-playing, world-traveling, casino-dwelling, jet-flying, ca limo-riding... Well, that would have been better if I remembered it. Free spirit! It is Setzer Gabiani. Wheeling, dealing... I don't freaking remember. I kiss don't like stealing. Ric Flair. Yeah, kiss stealing. I don't like Ric Flair. Anyway, it's Setzer, the owner of the world's only airship. It's Setzer. So we're all, we're going to jack his airship and fly south to the Empire. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get the hell out of here. We're going to go south to the Opera House. And we're going to make the trip faster because we're going to go in here and buy a freaking Chocobo. So I don't have to deal with any battles between here and... No, I know. I know how to ride the... I know. I had to ride a chocobo at the very beginning of the game. Shut up. Chum, 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 chocobo. Love chocobo. Who would put the opera house way to the south on this tiny-ass peninsula? Rich people. That is not a good place for... Oh, yeah, that would make sense, because then the plebes don't attend their precious fucking opera. Opera house. Ah, you again. Do, 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 do. I love this song. I read that letter. Setzer's coming to steal her. He'll probably right up, appear right at the climax of scene one. He loves an entrance. Right. If we could grab him then. Dear me, no! You'll ruin the performance! I'll lose my job! But if you're in charge... And then that line makes no sense. Then you're a history! This is simply horrid. I want the performance to be a success. Won't it be a failure if Setzer storms the stage? Well, that's why he's freaking out. He doesn't know what to do about it. He doesn't know how to handle this entire situation. We'll let him grab her. We'll use Celeste as a decoy. After she's abducted, I'll follow him right to his airship. And Celeste does blinky face. Blink, blink. Adorable. Are you mad? If something should happen to Maria... Shove. 
That's why we'll use the decoy. We'll hide Maria somewhere safe. Come again? You said she looks like Maria, right? And poor Celeste is not having any of this shit. Now, just a minute. Celeste will be our Maria. She'll lead us right to the airship. That's brilliant! Poor Celeste has no say in this and is throwing a temper tantrum. Uh, wait! I'm a general, not some opera floozy! She headbutted the door in anger. And then just flipped us off again. She's trying some lines, some notes there, but her <laughs> fuzz could use a little work. Me, me, do, re, me. <laughs> now she's singing Maria's name and is apparently passable enough for Locke. Not bad, Celeste. And who is that? Why, it's the real Ultros, who <laughs> is going to pretend to be Setzer to abduct the fake, so he's gonna be a fake Setzer to abduct the fake but real Maria. Oh, God. So he throws a letter to try to threaten us, but we're all whatever. We don't see flying papers. And I want to know why this giant purple octopus with fucked up teeth is just hanging out in the middle of the opera house and no one is saying a word. Yeah. I mean, look how packed the thing is down there. What else are beginning bosses going to do? Well, what are the NPCs doing? They don't care about this no giant, idea. gross, purple octopus who's hanging out in their opera house? Nope. He My paid gosh. good money to get in. I suppose. Once you have enough money to splash, you don't have to even worry about giant purple octopi. Shh, shh, shh. Everybody. The opera's starting. <laughs> this is one of my favorite scenes in games. This one threw me. Um... I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let you guys read this because I'm not going to sing it. Those bass players in the front row are really having a field day with their instruments. So as you're going to see here, the notes are not going to quite match the lyrics. It's because of more translation limitations because of the Super NES's uh, limit on its memory. So a lot of times they just had to kind of fudge the lyrics to make it fit. Riveting performance. Riveting. So, Locke is feeling a little antsy, so he's going to head to the dressing room. Because who wouldn't want to see Celeste in a tiny outfit? Ah, uh, even Gao, the uncultured wild kid, is enjoying the opera. Pretty oh, song. Pretty song. And Cyan is all, I'm going to relax. You've earned it, buddy, now that your wife and child are poisoned and dead. Okay, so we are going to head to the dressing room. We're going to be awesome. We're going to see Celeste. And Locke is so taken in by that low-cut dress, he turns red. Aw. Hey, ay ay. Is that you? Locke, why did you help me escape back there? I once abandoned someone when she needed me. And now we know who that is. This line is going to be delivered the same way regardless of whether you saw the, those uh, cutscenes back in Kolingen. But now we know why. It's less of a mystery. 
Somewhere inside you, you were saving her, weren't you? That ribbon suits you. That is pitch perfect dialogue delay to put that just the right amount of dramatic pause so both characters know exactly what Locke is thinking, but they're it's just unspoken. Locke isn't going to admit it and Celeste isn't going to push that hard. On with the show. This is the big scene in which Maria senses the something is happening to uh, Draco, Draco, whatever his name Draco. is. Draco. Draco. So Locke suggests we check the score, which I'm not going to do, because I know exactly what the hell's going on here. And, uh... I, I think it's time for the condition to reveal itself. Oh, boy. Okay, so now that you've sung the song, does that mean I don't have to play the rest of the game? Are we done? 
No, so you like, have to play the rest of the game. Damn it! But there's so much more and nobody wants to see anymore. Uh, I, you, I you know. You said you'd play the whole game. I, I sang did. the whole song. You did. I sang the song. You, you sang the song. I sang, you the, sang song. the song beautifully. Now you have to uphold your end of the bargain. <sighs> you douche canoe. Well done, Celeste. And well done, the Akamura. I'm sure you moistened some panties while, after that rendition. I better have moistened some panties. You moistened all of the panties. I owe you one, so I'm going to jam up your opera. Great, Ultros. Great. <laughs> Locks all, I better tell the impresario, but he's walking because he doesn't have the sprint shoes on him. Eh, we're just going to leisurely stroll. I better stroll. tell the impresario. Leisurely stroll along here. Pretty song. Shut up, gal. Nobody cares about your opinion. All right, so we've told the impresario just as we have a musical climax. The survivors of the West attack. Impossible. Attack. Those are the same little sword moves that Cyan was doing when he in, uh, infiltrated the Imperial camp way back when. Wait. Hi, Draco. Draco. You. That is the worst one for the Super NES translation. It's like 20 notes and 8 syllables of words. Ugh. But they did what they had, or they did what they could. That one's not much better. It's a duel! <laughs> that one's hard to mess up. But how might he disrupt the opera? With that? There's Ultro shoving a f an 8,000 pound weight up on the scaffold of the building. Uh. Pretty sure the scaffolding isn't really that strong. And the uh, artists of the game took a little bit of a liberty. You'd be surprised with theater scaffolding. Really? Yeah. It's going to take five minutes to push this goddamn thing off. Well, that's... Yeah, yeah. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay, good. Here we go. All right. So, eh, I only have five minutes to do this. And I haven't said anyone's... Uh, oh, God. Locke, do you know uh, Cure yet? Oh, thank God you do. Okay, we're going to haul ass... We got this. So, the far right switch actually does what it needs to do. The other three have different effects, like one shuts off the lights, one makes you fall, and I forget what the third one does, but we're not dicking about for failure. We're gonna haul ass to the scaffolding. Run, Cyan, run. Run like your freaking life depended on it. Which it, which it does. Well, Celeste's life does. Yeah, that's true. Oh, good. Two enemies bypassed. Oh, I thought I could get past three. Um, and then this is another little difference. When I actually have a dash button to work with, then I can run at four times normal speed. And I go about and actually kill all these enemies just for maximum experience. And another unwelcome surprise you get in this fight is if you don't kill the gold rat first, but you kill the gray ones, then they'll respawn after you kill them, which just slows you down. Ugh. It's a very dick move. But, whatever. I'm actually not complaining about it, because once you know the strategy, you're fine. But it's just kind of a dick move when you first play the game. Yep, you have to get through the other two. That's fine. Oh boy. This is gonna be a bit of a problem. I forgot I gave him the black belt. Alright. Uh... Come on. Oh yeah, there's some new equipment for Locke. I bought some new stuff for uh, everybody. What the hell was that? That was a goddamn Meteo spell. Don't you fireball me. Goddamn, gal. You are one pissed off wild child. Okay, guys, attack the gold one. Thank you. All right, good deal. Who did I pick for that? 
I, I didn't see what rage I I picked for that for Gao. Ugh. I'm pretty sure that was Fireball, wasn't it? Yeah, but I picked a monster, and I don't know which monster I picked. Oh, I think you picked the gold one. No, no, I picked a I picked a list here, or picked up. I picked a rage, and I don't know which rage I picked. Oh. Uh. Because his abilities match whatever monster I choose for him, but I, I'll have to review the footage, because that's incredibly useful. <laughs> and I don't know which one I picked. Uh, don't hit Gal. Hit the stupid gold rat. Thank you. The, it's funny because a lot of these monsters in Gal's rage thing have more abilities than what you ever see in the field. All right, there we go. Hi, Ultros. Two minutes to spare. Literal party crashing. The murmur of the audience. The sentient purple octopus with messed up teeth has crashed the stage, and at best, the audience just goes... <laughs> of course, Locke stands up. Yeah, this gets kind of cute. Locke has very little, if any, stage fright once he realizes the situation he's in. Neither Draco nor Ross will save Celeste. I, Locke, the world's premier adventurer, will save her. I, what awful acting. Silence! You are in the presence of octopus royalty! A lowborn th thug like you could never defeat me! Ugh, might as well make the most of this. Music? And Celeste doesn't have any of her battle gear, so it's just... Long time no see! You've changed. Did you miss me? No, Ultros, we really didn't. Go to a dentist, buddy. Uh, Telstar. And Steel, and Sword Tech. That should do it. Nice block, Cyan. Oh, okay. Ultros has nothing. Wonderful. So, this background that you see, there's only two times in the entire game that background is used for battles. And, of course, this is one of them. And I picked a bad bad monster for Gal, because he's just doing useless bullcrap now. So, which is the other problem with Gal's entire skill set. Wow, Cyan, you are getting fucked up there, buddy. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it failed again. Lovely. Ultros just swam through the wooden stage. He's got some skills. I'll give him that. He's secretly Chuck Norris. Uh... Oh, good. I missed everybody. Excellent. I was not keeping track of their levels, so I don't know where they are at the moment, but apparently they are not divisible by three wherever they are. Eh. Which okay. means they're either 14-ish or 16-ish. We've pretty much got this in hand, but... Imp, pal, buddy... Oh, that's fine. Go ahead and turn Gao into an imp. He's being useless anyway. Oh, I missed. Wonderful. <sighs> Gao, I hate you. You're a useless sack of shit. We can't even have Shadow during this part. Like, there's a way that you can sort of try to get Shadow after Zozo, but Shadow refuses to attend the opera. Or rather, during the opera, Shadow just leaves. So... When you go to the dressing room to talk to Celeste and then come back, Shadow is simply not there anymore. He ducked out during the biggest song. He's such a dick. I mean, you have to be pretty impressive to out-dick Ultros. I ain't no garden-variety octopus. I don't think octopi come in gardens. <sighs> Dispatch! Oh my god, you're taking forever to kill. Just die already, Ultros. Nobody likes you. Oh, thank you for contributing, finally. Freaking gal. That would have been more useful early on, but whatever. Better late than never. 
I just, I just can't get over Ultros. He's so ridiculous looking. And someone got turned into it. Oh, uh, whatever. So getting turned into an Imp um, cuts your attack power. And worse than that, you can't do anything except... Like, uh, you can't do your standard... Uh, you can't do your special skills. And right now our special skills are the only thing that's doing any sort of offense to this guy. And there goes Gao. He's dead. Lovely. Well. Come on, guys. End his ass. Please. Uh, oh, God. Ah, uh, where's the Phoenix Downs? No, 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 no. Okay, good. That's fine. He can take it. All right, the nice thing about Gao dying, though, is it resets his stupid rage so I can pick someone who can actually help us out here. Stop turning me into a flipping imp, please. Gao, do something. Commander? Do commander. Yes, I think that's useful. Uh-huh. Have you read it? Have I read what? What? That must be a translation error. Have you read it? Read what? The letter? Oh, maybe. I don't know. It's so weird. It's such a weird line. How sweet it is! Just... Stop talking forever, Ultra. God damn, this battle's taking me longer than it usually does. Freaking die! How many legs does he have? It looks like he has... No, he, he does have eight. Apparently walking on two of them. Oh, I can't even cast magic in imp form. Oh, God. That's not gonna work, Gao. He's a boss. You can't instant kill a boss. Except that phantom train. Oh, my God. I can't believe how long this is taking me. I'm pretty embarrassed. I don't know if that's gonna... Okay. Wow. It worked. It worked, but I don't think it really matters, because Gao can still just punch yeah. the crap out of him. His rages... Oh, boy. His rages, um change his weapons. Like, he, he actually doesn't carry a weapon. Ah, damn it. Oh my oh, god. Did he just kill Gao again? He did. I'm having some damn serious it. problems here. This is amazing. I, oh god, am I out of Phoenix Downs? No, you had two. Where? I don't see him. Up. There. Oh. I'm out of something. Ugh. <sighs> You're not out of green cherries, are you? Oh, yeah, I'm out of green cherries. Oh, that's what I'm out of. Okay, yes. I don't even know if Gao can activate rages when he's amped, because I never use them. Oh, God, that's probably going to kill him, too. Or not. But he still needs... Ugh, God. Wow. No, he can't... Oh, God, he can't... <laughs> he can't rage while he's amped. Ah... Uh... Oh god, why? Wait, did Locke just unimp? Yeah, he unimped. Cause Ultros did his stupid Imp is a Imp is a toggle. So like if you're imped and then you imp, you unimp. Uh That's weird. Fucking soldier. One of those does fire, and fire is the important one. He's weak against fire, I just can't remember which monster does fire. I ain't no garden variety octopus. Shut up. Just Octopi shut up. don't come in gardens. There it is. Oh, that was him doing that. Damn it. Lame. Gal? Gal, you have to be the hero here. Since I am super underleveled for this. Gal, that is not a fire attack. I need you to do a fire attack, buddy. Please. Otherwise, this battle's gonna take another half an hour to... Gal? <sighs> I feel really sorry for the musicians because 
they did not anticipate they'd have to play the music this long. Oh, God. There we go. What an unlucky day. Adios. Exit stage right. Good job. Heck. And we get two gold for it. Two whole gold points. Two whole pets. Yay. Just a darn minute. We already waited. Can we just get on with this, please? What a performance! So he spins Celeste and grabs her, and she gets out of the dress and into her battle tart and huge overcoat. Which implies either Setzer had that exact outfit on him, or Celeste was wearing it under her dress. Either way, that's some pretty impressive, you know, magic link bag, I guess. What a reversal. Thinking she's Locke's new queen, Maria is instead nabbed by Setzer. What fate lies in store for her? Stay tuned for part two. Are you actually going fade, to write this goddamn opera? Fade to black. And the musicians are still freaking the hell out. Well, I'm sure the audience is just dumbfounded and dumbstruck. The audience is gone. <laughs> So what's with all the hats? They just left all their clothes behind? Cardboard standees. They don't want to hurt the impresario's feelings. <laughs> okay. So sets are locked. Poor Celeste in this building. Or not building, but the room of the airship. She gives a signal. And the rest of the party magically knows exactly how to get on board. Even though, like, they've never seen this airship before. What a performance! Enough already! Sorry, Celeste. Alright, so... Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Let's go. Alright, there's Cesar. You're not Maria. You're only now figuring that out? Cesar, we need your help. We have to go to Vector. We need this ship to get there. Look, if you're not Maria, I don't want you on board. Wait! We were told your ship is the finest vessel in the world. And that you are the world's most notorious gambler. Gao has nothing to say. I am one of Doma's knights. Please help us. Okay, so Setzer wets his panties over Celeste. Uh, okay. Alright. Empire's made me a rich man. Stop thinking of yourself. Many towns and villages have been smashed by the Empire. The Empire is also totally rotten. It's using magic to enslave the world. I lost my friends. And my family. And Gao still has nothing to say. Empire? Evil? Well, yeah, Kevin is there. We you all think hate- that place isn't evil? We all hate the Empire for the same reasons. Except Gao. That's why- you know, you're even more stunning than Maria. I'm a half-chub just thinking about it. Poor Celeste turns red. So, this is weird, and even in the advanced translation, it doesn't really help. So, set, sets her's all, if Celeste marries me, I'll help. And Locke is not having any of that nonsense. But then Celeste agrees, and I'm just going to blaze through the dialogue here. Celeste but agrees, conditions. but then she says, we're going to flip a coin instead. And this was what I'm in in the episode last or the one before it. The where one before, I think. If Edgar and Sabin are in your party, she takes the coin from Edgar. But if they're not, she just has the coin on her by chance. But yeah, Setzer said, if she's my wife, I'll help. Celeste said, okay, but let's flip a coin to figure it out. So really... There's no reason for her to say that she was okay with the... with, with I don't know. It's stupid. It, it's like a double negative that's... Well, whatever. Anyway, so Celeste flips the coin. Both sides are heads. Setzer just said the line. There's nothing... Uh, something about, yeah, let's do it. I've got nothing to lose but my life. My, li my life is a chip in your pile. Ante up. Shut up, Setzer. Is he going to be making those puns the entire time? Um, no, but all of his weapons are gambling related. He throws cards and darts and dice at people. Oh, God. Those are all of his weapons. It's Gambit. It's Gambit, yes. When things fall, they fall. It's all a matter of fate. Oh, yeah, I guess he's not done yet. This ship's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Better land some distance away. Right. I'll wait on board in case of an emergency. Yep. 
Evil. The capital's lights are so bright, we're seeing them from beyond the horizon line. I'm pretty sure that's physically impossible, but whatever. Look at how intimidating that mountain or building or whatever pixels are is. Yeah. Scary. It looks like a pyramid. A metal... A very scary metal pyramid. We're going to check out that very scary metal pyramid in the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Glad you stuck around for an extended episode, but that one was hopefully worth it. Tune in tomorrow for another one. See ya. Thank you. Yeah, turning the mic up helps. <laughs> okay. Take one. Oh, my hero, my beloved, shall we still be forced to part? Your promises of perennial love yet sing here in my heart i'm the darkness you're my starlight shining brightly from afar in hours of despair i offer this prayer to you my evening star must my final vows exchange it be with him and not with you were you only here to quiet my fears oh speak guide me anew I am thankful, my beloved, for your tenderness and grace. I see in your eyes, so gentle and wise, all doubts and fears erased. Though the hours Take no notice of what fate might have in store. Our love, come what may, will never age a day. I'll wait forevermore.